So I want to say thank you on behalf of Dynamics. Thank you for being here. Thank you for spending that day with us. And I'm going to give the 100% of me today to explain to you what are those um, best practices? What are those learnings that we had from previous experiences, years of working with customers and enterprise customers? So as, as George say, those that are starting out dynamics or considering, but also for those that are already customers, they might review what they have done. Maybe they're missing something, okay? So uh, my name is Edgar Rivera, and uh, last year I was getting the same invitation to come to this event. I was working in one of the top banks in Spain, uh, here in the UK, and we were developing a payments platform in Java, microservices, cloud, you know, this digital transformation and agile that most of the banks are having. I was leading one of the projects and the implementation of a payments platform from the scratch. And I do remember when my stakeholder told me, Edgar, we need monetization. And I said, okay. And we were about to go to production and it was so important to, to have this uh, for the production uh, application. So then I started to review the different vendors, the different options that we have in the market. And AppDynamics really strived me from the very beginning. At that time, I didn't know what was possible. I didn't know how to start from having an APM and how to do this, all of this. It was a bit, I was a bit lost. And what I noticed is that Many of you might be in the same position that how to start, how can, we, how can we also inspire the teams, the developers, the DevOps to follow an APM strategy, okay? And this talk is all about this. So um, how are we gonna do it? Well, the first thing I had, I had to show the, the NDA, okay, the agreement. So it's just the typical thing. And how are we gonna structure the talk today? So we're gonna have three, three tracks, three segments, okay? The first one is gonna be about the people, yeah? Uh, the second is gonna be about the product, it's what the product is capable of, and the third is gonna be about the processes, okay? The processes around uh, your APM strategy, okay? Or APM. Now, it's gonna focus on the people track. Now, on the people track, I believe this is the most important track, the most important segment, because at the end of the day, it is the people, it is you guys that are gonna go to your companies and start this movement, start this uh, uh, thing about APM and monitorization your applications. At the end of the day, it's the people who you rely on. And if the people is not aligned, if the people doesn't know what they have to do, then there is a discompensation. There is, there is need some, you need some planning around. So I'm gonna show you the seven steps to you know, create this uh, strategy so then you can have your people aligned on, on all the APM aspects, okay? Let's go on that. Good, so now, this is when you, when you start. What is the very first thing you have to answer? You have to, to ask yourself. It is why we're doing this. What is our vision? What do we want from this APM? Yeah? Why are we doing the monitorization? What matters to us? If you don't know what is your vision, if you don't know why you're doing this, what is the goal, the ultimate goal? Yes? You don't know where you're going. And that's the very first thing you need to understand. Okay? It's, uh, if you don't have this planning before, then you're gonna be like a, a chicken without a head, okay? Just running around, trying one thing, trying another thing, and that's why it's so important to understand what is our vision, where, what, is, uh, what is our goal, where are we going? Yes or no? Yes. Good. Now, the second thing is more about priorities. It's more about, okay, what need to do, what we have to do first. I mean, most of the applications or enterprise applications, we have environments, yes or no? Yeah, we got the development, we got, what else? Test your 
pre-production, yes, how we got production environment, yeah? So then you need to think about what are we gonna do first? I do remember when we were at this bank developing this platform, we, we, we had the development environment and the pre-production environment, and we haven't yet uh, you know, set up the production environment. So then you need to think about what, what comes first, or what, what is the order, yeah? And it's so important because I see now more and more companies using APM from early stages, yeah? So from the development environment, from the testing environment, because the better software you release to production, the more confident you become, more confident you're gonna have less outages, less errors, and less problems, and better performance, yes or no? So that's why you need to understand what, it, what comes first, and what is the plan behind, yeah? Are we gonna deploy uh, the agents in pre-production, production, so how this is gonna work? How this is gonna work? And sometimes it seems obvious, but you require some planning before putting the hands on, yeah? And technical people, um, I got the technical background. We tend to go directly to, to, the, to put the hands on. How can I install the platform? How can I install the agents? And you jump directly to, to the technical side without having the, the big picture, yeah? The big picture. So that's why I believe Priorities and planning is the second most important on the seven steps. Good. Then after this, that's when you start to, to give some responsibilities. Yeah, so who is gonna do what? And you start to de decide the roles. Yeah, who's gonna be responsible of the platform administration, of the agents rollout, who is gonna be responsible of uh, understanding uh, the business value and how to connect that with the APM too. So you need to, to also think about, okay, do we need some training? It's, uh, do we, we need somebody in our team that's gonna lead this? Yeah, we call it champion. We call it App Dynamics champion. Who's gonna be your App D champion? Yeah, who's gonna lead that uh, um, movement in your organization? Yeah, so roles, responsibilities is the third thing. Then you need to think about, okay, what kind of training we need? Yeah? Think about the skills that your team has. They have any APM background? Is that something new for them? Yeah? So, okay, we need to think, oh, they need maybe to, to, to run some labs or some training. They need to have access to some material. We have uh, the App Dynamics University and so many resources available just at one click, and they can start to get trained. And there are so many technologies as well that we support. Think about uh, now we have microservices and cloud, and you got .NET, Node.js, everything. So it's possible to have different technologies on the same application. So that's why you need to think about who is going to be aligned with what, OK? And, and then you think on that training. Good. Now, all the important aspect is the integration. So now we see so many applications, so many products that does different things. You got log aggregators, you got continuous delivery uh, platforms, and you know all of these things happening at the same time. So how the APM solution is gonna uh, integrate with these third-party products, yeah? Are you gonna link the logs with any log aggregator, so you need to think about the integrations, yes? The integration, so we, we have um, a very powerful um, uh, plugins or extensions where people can download and enrich the platform to you know, cover other aspects. So think about those integrations, which ones are critical, which ones are important for that goal, that vision, okay? then. Also, as I mentioned before, now, and it's becoming more and more important to release software faster. You know, a few, few weeks ago, I was in a customer, and they have a banking application, mobile banking application. And I look into the Apple Store the, to see the, the releases they have done this year. They done, in the last six months, uh, the last year, only three releases. 
And I was like, wow, OK. And then in the other, say, in the other side, I see other game challengers in the industry. You know, those fintechs that are creating applications and they're using uh, agile methodologies. And there was one of these fintechs I look into the application. There were 43 releases in less than six months. 43. So they're releasing like every week, every week. So how that is going to integrate uh, with your APM solution, yeah? Are you going to compare releases? Are you going to compare the performance between the release 1.0 to 1.1, or you know what I mean? So think about how the life cycle development, also it, it's related with your APM strategy or the way you're using the APM. This is super important. So you guarantee that your next version is fully uh, tested and is, it's working as you expected, OK? Now, another thing that I found really important is talking the same language. What I mean by that? So imagine if you jump into a, into a you know, training or whatever, like a training session of uh, AppDynamics, and then people doesn't know what is APM, yeah? So people need to talk the same language, the same terminology, yeah? So everybody is on the same page. Everybody have the same language. And it's really important. So we know agents, uh, what that means, console. And that's it making that everybody, if somebody, somebody comes next week or next month, whatever, they automatically will get on board. They get on board, they know the same language. They know what we're talking about. That correct? Good. So that's the very first step from my 10 top tips uh, for adoption success. So let's go, let's move forward. Now, this is the, this is, I always talk about this on my talk, and it's about the golden circle. This is based on a book uh, written by uh, Simon Sinek. He say basically that certain organizations, certain individuals, they, they can explain what they do, okay? They can say what products they have, what services they have, what they do. I'm a lawyer, okay, I do law. You know what I mean? So that's easy, that's the easiest thing. Some other organizations, some other individuals are capable to articulate how they do it. How they do it, yes? So this is more about, yeah, your unique selling proposition. What that make you unique? What makes you unique, your company, your business? Good. But only very few individuals, only very few companies, yes, can explain and articulate properly why they're doing it. What is the powerful message behind? And this is so important because if the people, your team, your organization have a powerful why, why you need to have a clear, like a flawless experience in your applications. So your customers, they back, they like, they like the performance, they, they like the experience, yes? Why is that so important in your organization? You have to have this powerful message, clear message, and then you can inspire your members, your DevOps, your, uh, the development team, the business team, everyone on the same page. They have the same reason, okay? And that's why I was talking about the golden circle. It start with the why. It start with the why in your company. Why you need APM? Why now? Why not in two months? Well, what happened if you don't put APM today? What will happen with those critical applications? Yeah? This is super important. Now let's, let's keep going, okay? I wanna show you more content. And at the end of the track, I will show you, I will invite you guys to uh, a session, yeah? for those who want to go more deep into the how, okay? Now, another point is documenting the internal knowledge. You see, every time you solve an issue, you find a bug, or you, you, you fix something on production or whatever, document it, because you're gonna learn from that. And other people will come, and they will learn again. They can see that documentation. So create playbooks. So when you, when you know what happened when a problem appeared, how they did it, 
You know, I was on call. And how many times I was on call and I had to wake up Saturdays or in the night or weekends to fix a problem. And the very first question is, uh, what's happening? How can I do this? Yeah? What are the steps that I need to do to find the root cause of a problem? OK? So document that and share it, of course. <laughs> you need to share that in uh, you know, wikis or all of these um, platforms for sharing knowledge. Third, third is about measuring. It's about KPIs. KPIs is a way to measure success. If you don't know, if you want to know if you are successful with your new APM strategy, if you, know, if you want to know if your application is better than the previous version, you need to measure. Yes or no? Yeah, so then you need to think about what success means for your organizations, for your company. Because for every company, success means something different, okay? Maybe for DevOps, success is server is 100% available, yeah? But success for a business is we got 100 orders, 1,000 orders, you understand? So make a list of those top 25 KPIs, yes? Obviously, they're going to be different based on the, the, the roles, yeah? But make a list, and then from there, you can start to create your KPIs and think about how can you create dashboards that show those KPIs, okay? Good. This is the, the DM of um, the, um, the first segment, but before we move to the product uh, segment, I want to show you just some lists, uh, some examples of KPIs that you can use. So for example, in development, you can show about number of backlog items, you can talk about uh, time spent in production issues, yeah? All of these things more related with the development, yes? Then on the IT ops, the DevOps, they're more about the mind time resolution, okay? The, the time that it takes to, to fix a problem. It's more about availability, it's more about like uh, service app, okay? And for business, for business is, there's more, they're focused on the conversion, right? They're focused on the sales, they're focused on the revenue, yes? What is the percentage of the online revenue at the moment exposed? Yeah, if you got an application, I mean, how many shopping carts we have? How much money it's exposed? If there is a problem in one of the microservices, how much money will be impacted, okay? Those are the kind of the KPIs that the business matters, they, 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 they worry about. Good. Now, let's move for the product uh, segment. For the product segment, um, I, I like to talk about the flow. Have you seen, guys, the map, the map IQ? Have you seen in the stands those demos and some, you know, balls and connections and lines? Have you seen it? Good. So that we call the, your topology. That's your application components. Well, this tip is about going with the flow. If you have a map that is complex, guess what? Your application is complex, yes? So go with the flow. Some companies, they cut off. They, they, they reduce the number of elements or uh, components just to make it more, more simple and nicer. No, it's the other way around, yeah? Make it bigger, and then you can see the end-to-end, -end, because this is about end-to-end -end visibility. That's where we go at it. We can correlate those transactions all across the microservices, databases, queues, and containers, so see the whole thing, the whole map. Go with the flow, okay? Good, but what's happening? Sometimes you got so much noise, you got so many noise because you, you have a lot, maybe a lot of transactions, maybe you have so many applications for big companies. So then how can you start from the noise and start to see some, some signal, some light? You know, I, I always say if you have 10 applications, 20 applications, you know what? Grab the top five, the most problematic. Some people say, are you crazy? It's gonna take more time. Well, if you're small, you're gonna solve small problems. But if you're big, you're gonna solve big problems. Yes or no? So what's happening? If you solve the problems of your, the, of your applications, the bigger applications, you're gonna have more time to focus in other applications. 
You're going to have more time and you're going to have more experience. More experience because all the learnings of that complexity you can carry on and apply for your other applications. So grab those complex applications, start to focus on that one, and maybe take one that is maybe a proof of concept or something that is starting. So you can also do something uh, you know, that is not critical. And then we have ways to filter those transactions when there is so many transactions. And when you start to do that, when you start to apply the right filters on your transactions, that's when you start to see some signals from that noise, okay? So then you can see, oh, now I see those transactions that matters. Because sometimes, especially when you have APIs, when you have uh, so many microservices, you can see many, many transactions. But what are the transactions that matters to your business? Okay, and that's what I call configuring signals from noise. Okay, we have powerful tools to filter transactions and, and have a different scope for the transactions. Good. Another thing that is important is exercise your options. What I mean by this, exercise your options is all about <coughs> capabilities, what the product is capable of. So we have advanced instrumentation, yeah? So if you have uh, maybe a, an application that it's, uh, it's showing, I don't know, different like complexity in the transactions and you need to maybe just go and tune in that, that uh, instrumentation. If you wanna just go to the agent and see, okay, what's happening really in underneath. So it's possible to configure that instrumentation. Also, I mentioned before that I see many companies now uh, using APM, AppDynamics in development. So we can enable the snapshots in development. So what I mean by that? So you're capturing all the information from the stack trace for every transaction. I will not recommend this in production, okay? Because in production you want to have a good, good performance and, and you don't want to impact, obviously, your production application. But for that development, it's great. Use it. You can enable this for every tier and then you got, the developers will have more, more data. They can see what's going on when there is an error, okay? Also, I recommend to think about health rules. What are, what are the kind of the rules, the health rules that are, matters for you, okay? And now that we support, now that we have the business IQ, you can also have health rules related with the business. So what happens if my shopping cart amount of money goes below 10K? Maybe the servers are okay, the availability is fine, everything is okay, no problems, but something is going on with the business. So, I invite you guys, I encourage you to go outside, talk to our uh, AppDynamics experts and see Business IQ, how that works. How can that help your business to have real-time intelligence and, have, and make real-time decisions based on how your business is performing? And then, obviously, put all of these in nice dashboards, yes? So we got a very powerful tools to customize dashboards, and I used to invite people uh, I also recommend people to bring designers on board. So because they, they are visual. Yeah, they are visual. They know the color. They are pretty good on that. So if you, if you have a nice dashboard that is visual, people is going to use it every day. So you better put some thinking on that dashboard because that's going to be the first entrance for the demos, the development, the business. Good. Those are some examples of health rules like related with transaction performance, low, responsive, or with infrastructure, like server, CPU, the typical ones, and also related with user experience, especially those related with mobile or uh, HTML pages. All of that can be a health rule, can turn into a health rule. Now, the third segment is about process. Processes are the things that we see repeated. They repeat, we see it again and again. And sometimes we can automate those processes or we can you know, identify them properly. And then, now think about how important is this as well for your strategy, for your, the, the, the whole APM 
um, a strategy. Because if there is a process, and that process is gonna, is gonna happen again, so then there's an opportunity to improve it. There is an opportunity to maybe document it, to understand, to optimize it. And uh, in this part, I wanna, I wanna just highlight some processes that are really important when we talk about APM. And the first one is about security. I mean, how many of you have seen, uh, have heard about the GDPR? Come on, just raise your hand. Yeah, everyone in the room. That is affecting many, all of the businesses in, in UK and Europe. So think about what sensible data you're gonna uh, have in your application. So maybe some developers can have access to that, so how can you control who can see what? Yeah, so we got powerful role-based access tools, so then this team can see this application, that team can see the other application, or maybe that person can modify certain settings, you know, or if you're, for example, um, uh, if you wanna capture information on your SQL queries, you can also enable or disable to see the parameters. So that's something very important because it is possible. I mean, out of the box, we don't capture any sensible data, okay? But when you enable certain things, you need to think about who is gonna see that information. So think about the processes related with the security, the data security around your application. So you can think about how can the tool can help you to and improve those processes or make it better. Another one, it's for me, it's all about automation. So can I see by hands uh, if in the audience we have DevOps people or people more uh, technical oriented? Good. So this is about DevOps mindset. So DevOps, they always like to automate. If they had to do something twice, oh, they're gonna, they're gonna create a, a script, they're gonna do Terraform, they're gonna do something to make it automatic so they can reuse it again, again in another environment, in another application. So the number eight is about automation. If you, if you have a on-premises on installation, uh, many of our customers are using the SaaS solution, but if you have on-premises uh, installation, think about how you're gonna deploy those agents, yeah? If you can automate that and incorporate it in your continuous delivery. Now that we support, we, we support containers, yeah? Like Docker, Kubernetes, or Pivotal Cloud Foundry, it's much easier, very easy to link the agent to your application. But some, sometimes companies, they're not in microservices. They're not yet in cloud. They still have standalone applications, so, those cases is when you think, you, you have to think how can I automate this? Also think about how you're gonna monitor if you have on-premises controller, yes? And, and also, how you're gonna automate everything related with the configuration. If you do some changes, maybe that change can be replicated again and again, or you're gonna get some, you know, every time there is a new deployment, a new application, I have to apply these settings, those settings, it is possible to automate that, okay? Um, another one which is important is, again, integration with events, with system events, with other events. And uh, we have a powerful API that can practically, you can do everything that you do from the UI and even more from, from the API. So I've seen some customers calling directly the API and maybe integrating that in their uh, other tools or other uh, platforms. And also I mentioned this before, the extensions, yeah? There are so many extensions developed by us and also third party companies and there is also a way to develop your own extensions if you want some specific integration, okay? Good. Now, let's go to the number nine. The number nine is my favorite and it's all about mindset. You see, guys, for me, it's very important to have this one clear from the day one. Because we have seen companies, organizations, that they come together thanks to AppDynamics. Because sometimes I remember the database people saying, no, it's not my fault. And the infrastructure people, no, my servers are fine. And the development, no, my code is flawless. 
I don't have box. Yeah? And this blaming thing, no, it's the other way around. It's about collaboration. It's about having everyone on board, teamwork. It's all about exchanging the information. It's about trusting the other team. In App Dynamics, when there is a database error or when there is a problem, if you find the root cause and it's a query, you can just, just get the link, copy the link, and then send it to another team. So have this mindset of collaboration, of supporting, sharing. Yeah? I know it's difficult sometimes in organizations, yes, but it's all about the why. Why is so important that we have a good application in our market? See the competitors. See what they're doing. See what are they doing, the new, the new startups. They're growing so fast because they, they have this mindset. They have this mindset. They have the mindset of collaborate, of helping each other, and that's why they grow fast. So this is super important, and this message has to come from the top. It's the leaders that have to, to spread that message in the company, in the organization, okay? Because if everybody knows that collaboration is something that we do in the company, then it's natural. Then everybody is on board. Okay, so now let's do a quick summary. People segment, it was about set an APM strategy. This is the why, what, and how, okay? Uh, number two was about documenting internal knowledge. It's enabling, sharing. It's more about discussing, okay? Um, it's, it's all about uh, centralizing the information, good? Number three is about KPIs, understanding what is important, what matters, what matters for every team, okay? Then on the product segment, um, I talk about go with the flow. This is more of understanding like having the, the big map IQ and all the components, good? And it's end-to-end -end visibility, end-to-end -end visibility. That's where we're good at it. And number five was configuring the signals from the noise. This is about like starting from the complexity, yes, from the complex applications, from uh, several transactions to granularity and be more precise. And the number six was more about exercising your options. How capable is our product, yeah? We, we, I mean, there's so many talks today about what is coming for AppDynamics. Now we, we got SIP monitoring, uh, mainframe monitoring, uh, our improvement supporting for Kubernetes. This is more about also capabilities, what our product is capable of. How can you do in, in the advanced features like uh, instrumentation and all of this? And number, uh, the product segment, I say, was about security. What are the processes around data? and automation, it's more about this DevOps culture, automation, and the number nine is the mindset, the collaboration culture. So that's it, that's the, the nine tips, but have you noticed that I missed one? Yes? Good, so now the number 10 is App Dynamics. And why I'm saying App Dynamics? Because we're here to support you. Your success is our success. You see our core values. We like to be better every time. We challenge ourselves, how can we improve our product? How can we make a better product? We like to do it together, a strong team working together as a team. And we like to do transformative changes, transformative this industry by leading uh, for example, like Business EQ was a big improvement, doing business intelligence in real time. And we like to create champions, champions of app dynamics, yeah? And also, we take our business very serious, but we like to do it in a, in a positive way and in a fun way. Those are our values, and that's what we stand for. So your success, again, is our success. We're here to help you. I asked about the GSP, the Joint Success Program, Center of Excellence, what other tools, what other resources we have for enable companies, organizations to have success in your APM industry a, a, a strategy. Well, now I say at the beginning that for those who want to go more deep and put their hands on, I'm gonna do something special. I'm gonna show you how 
how to do the advanced things, how to you know, learn more about these advanced topics. So I'm gonna do a drop-in session here in London. So for those interested, please open this form and give us your details. We're gonna organize this session in London and everyone is, is welcome, it's free, and, and we will help you guys to understand more advanced topics.